The Flaming Star Nebula, also known as IC405, is a reflection emission nebula. It has a magnitude of plus six, so kind of an intermediate target that will need some time investment on your behalf. You can find loads of other people's work on Astrobin as well as on any search engine for this target is well documented. In fact, I would say this should definitely be in your stable of astro photos that you can go back and revisit time and time again. Being the nebula is 1500 light years from us and only a magnitude six, expect your individual subs to appear a little dim and thin. In fact, just look at the single sub with the Rasa that was five minutes long. Now there is a big star that lights this one up and you can see the star from Earth with an eight inch or larger telescope, according to some people. But you would probably need to be on a moonless night in less than a Bortle five or six sky. Now I've read that some people can see some diffused light using different optical filters with their eyepieces, but I cannot verify that personally. Just to be clear, you're going to see the star and maybe some gray blotchiness around it. IC405 hangs out up here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's in the constellation Auriga, whose brightest star of the constellation happens to be Capella, which is also the sixth brightest star in the sky. So you can get your bearings on Capella and use that as one of your alignment stars, since you're gonna be hanging around that neighborhood anyway. Something pretty cool about this object is that it resides fairly close to IC410. So if you're shooting wide field, you can get both of these targets. So unlike some objects we image, this one is actually pretty interesting to say the least. The light bulb for this nebula is star Origae. This big blue O-type main sequence star supposedly was over near Orion's belt, but it got kicked out of the dance hall and it is now hurling out of the super unknown. But she just so happens to be moving through this dust and gas region, lighting it up for us. So people with degrees that exceed mine by like 10 years worth of studying, they say this thing is plowing through at a very high rate of speed and is producing some pretty severe bow shock as well as electromagnetic radiation that you know would probably fry an egg in like a nanosecond. Now while this thing is running through space at roughly 230,000 miles per hour or 100 kilometers a second, a round number estimate of when it will be gone from this region is something like 20,000 years. So you still got some time to capture it. Time's ticking. So what you're basically gonna be shooting is interstellar hydrogen, which gives that smoky look in the nebula, along with some carbon dust grains that are mixed in, which are gonna give you the darker regions. Now the star itself is so badass and hot that it knocks electrons away from the surrounding gas. As the protons fight to get back what they lost, the light is emitted and it glows red. The blue part you are seeing is because that star is so dang bright blue. I mean, the red photons that mix in with it, along with all that blue light, that reflects against the dust, reflects back to us, and it looks blue. So the best time to image this is going to be between November and February. So it's gonna be definitely a winter target for the most part. Now it is rising in the Northeast during the afternoon and it's gonna hit around the 35 degree mark in the East, probably a little after 6 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, this is all based in January. Uh, it will reach the meridian a little after 11 p.m. and then it will fall to the 35 degree line in the west somewhere around 4 a.m. So you've basically got almost all night to play with this one. I'm sure my detractors will say you shouldn't image below the 40 or 45 degree line. I don't listen very well. Now IC405 can be shot with a one-shot color or a mono camera, though I would suggest some sort of an HA03 filter in order to grab some more of the better detail for those of you who are going to be using a color camera. Now, Mono HA will give you some crazy-like detail for sure, and while the region is mostly hydrogen, you could still grab some O3 and maybe some S2, though I never had any luck with that. Certainly, this is an object you can get really creative on, just like at some of the pics on Astrobin. In addition, running a Mono LRGB set also gives some great detail to drool over, and honestly, you can get some really good star color mixed in here. I mean. You purists didn't think I'd leave you out of this now, did you? <clears throat> My recent version was shot with a Celestron 8-inch Rasa, an ASI 183MC Pro camera with the L-Enhance filter. The L-Enhance is utilizing the hydrogen and oxygen wavelengths with one-shot color, and as I suggested earlier, I would go with this if using one-shot color. I used a gain of 53 for my setting and cooled the camera to like negative 20 like everybody else does. I've associated my coloring on this most recent acquisition, reddish, as that it is probably what it should be without a lot of artistic flair thrown in, as compared to a prior project which I colored more RNG for a more of a fiery type of look. 
I don't know if it worked or not. I used five minute long exposures with a subtotal of 60 images. These were stacked and processed in AstroPixel processor. Total exposure time is 300 minutes, which is not bad for an F2. Probably could have gone longer even. Acquisition was completed with Sequence Generator Pro. My guiding software is PHD2. My mount is an IOPTRON CEM60, while guiding was done with a ZWO 30mm mini guide scope and a Lodestar X2 mono guide camera.